What's going on everybody? Welcome to Real Talk with Matt. So today we're going to talk about that brake testing I was telling you about. It actually turns out it's not as wild as I thought it was, but it's still pretty out there as far as the supercars, super SUVs versus sports cars like the Mustang, the Corvette, and the Camaro. And a matter of fact, we even got the Hellcat in there because you got to have that big bastard in there. So before we get going guys, I'd like to remind you of any of this is entertaining to you or you get any value out of it please remember to hit that like subscribe and hit that bell notification so you know when we upload things are changing a little bit on the channel as you see mondays we're doing a little bit something different we're still going to have a car day which is for sure going to be wednesday and friday is going to just be whatever we want to record uh, it could be cars it could be everyday vlogs it could be anything so today we're going to get into the brake testing and i'm going to breathe so guys, so supercars versus sports cars on the brake testing. What do you think? Let me give you a second. Go into the bottom of the comments. Tell me what you think. We all know the best way to stop a Mustang or to make a Mustang go faster, should I say, is put a crowd in front of it. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. But I also did a surprise at the end you guys are going to see. I looked up, what is it? One, two, three, four, five of the top 15 most dangerous cars in the world are in America right now. So we got that as well. So now I gave you time to sit there and tell me what you think about these brake tests. I wish I had a V-Box and somebody who owned every one of these cars so we could get together and test all these theories out. Some of these cars I've owned a few of them, one, two, three, four, five. I've owned a lot of them, but let's get into it. So you got the Ferrari 458. I actually couldn't find anything on the 488 for brake testing, which is very weird. Ferrari is very, very secretive when it comes to their brake testing. So we'll do it in meters and feet. That way you get a little bit of a meters. Ah, it's not too bad. And then when you hear feet, you people here in America, you're gonna be like, holy crap. So Ferrari 458, 60 to zero stopping time is, you ready, you ready? 29 meters, 95 feet. 70 to zero, 41 meters, 134 feet. That's not that much. It's still almost a football or a half of a football field when you get into the uh, the footage. So 720S, let's talk about the 720S. It's 28 meters, 92 feet, or that's 60 to zero, 70 to zero is 40 meters, 131 feet. You guys wonder, I'm looking over here because I wrote it all down so I didn't have to look down this time. So uh, now let's do a couple of the sports cars. I'm gonna throw it out there for the top two. Let me look at it over here real quick. So the top two is actually surprising. I, maybe not. You got the C7 ZR1. It stops in 28 meters, 92 feet. What's crazy is when you get into the American cars, the jump gets bigger on some of these cars when you get into the, like the Mustangs and the other things, and you'll see that. It becomes like 15 meters, 14 meters, versus the supercars pretty much stay steady within 12 meters of their 60 to zero and 70 to zero. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but the ZR1 did 28 meters, 92 feet, 60 to zero, 42 meters, 137 feet, so that's not bad, that's supercar, supercar style, but the ZR1 in some aspects is considered a supercar. So we have that to look at too. So we got the next runner up over here will be the new Mustang GT500. And it was 30 meters at 98 feet, 40, that's 60 to zero. 70 to zero is 43 meters, 141 feet. That's a lot. Okay, so see, you're starting to see that 13 meter jump versus the 12. Most of the supercars stay, they're about 12, pretty on standard. So that could be the difference. I believe the ZR1 I know has carbon ceramic brakes, the GT500, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's carbon ceramic as well. So let me throw out the lower end 
Well, we'll go with the Lamborghinis. Everybody loves the Lamborghini. So you got 29 meters. This is the Huracan Evo and the SVJ. Both of them stop at 29 meters from 60 to zero. Then you have from 70 to zero, 41 meters. So we know that's 92 feet, right? Or right, hold on. Yeah, 92, 95 feet, I'm sorry, 95 feet, and then 134 feet, right? So where it gets really, really scary, you see a lot of these Mustangs, the EcoBoost and all that, they think they can keep up with a supercar, so they ride their asses, right? They're right here. Now, let's put this scenario together. So, you have a Mustang EcoBoost. The EcoBoost and the GT are pretty close. The EcoBoost stops in 34 meters. So you imagine, that don't sound that much when you're, this is 60 to zero. You're behind the SVJ, 34 meters. In your head you're thinking, well that's not bad, that's five meters, right? You're forgetting that's 15 feet. 15 foot's a huge gap, so if that car slams on its brakes, that Evo or that SVJ slams on its brakes and you're in this little car trying to keep up, what do you think's gonna happen for those 15 feet, you're gonna slide and you're gonna hit in the back of it. Now, here's where we get crazy because the wing, the rear end of an Evo, the exhaust of an Evo, the exhaust of a Lamborghini SVJ sometimes costs more than the whole car you're gonna hit them with. What do you think your insurance is gonna do for you in the future? It's gonna be bad. So that's why I keep telling everybody when you're wanting to keep up with supercars, know your equipment. And that goes for supercar owners as well because there's some of the supercars that just don't keep up with the other supercars. When you hear it in meters, it's not that bad. But when you hear about it in feet here in America, it's pretty bad. 15 foot's a huge jump. I mean, that's bigger than a bedroom. Well, say a master bedroom. That's most people's driveways. So keep that in mind. You're trying to stop. When this car stops, you're still sliding. So you're gonna eat the back of that car. Your car's not equipped. Your car, I'm not saying your car's junk, so don't take that out of it. Your car's not equipped to keep up with the supercar. If you're lucky enough to be going fast enough to keep up with that SVJ, chances are you didn't do the proper upgrades to your brakes to stop how that SVJ stops factory. So keep that in mind when you're doing your upgrades, brakes are very important. So let's get out there with this one, sports car, the Dodge, Challenger, Hellcat, 33 meters, 109 feet. So that car is their top of the line, top echelon car. And a matter of fact, the Demon is worse than this, but uh, the Demon, they pretty much, everything was all over the place. So it was, they didn't want to tell you how bad their braking was in that, but it's a drag car. It's not made to just stop. It's not made to be on the highway either. So here's where we get into them weird jumps. You got 33 meters from 60 to zero, from 70 to zero, you got almost a 14 meter jump. That's six more feet in regular time. So you're talking 154 feet, right? That's crazy over the supercars. And as the speeds get higher, the distances you need to cover are more. So you can go in and do a weight calculation. I actually was doing this for almost nine hours trying to figure out, hey, let's figure this stuff out for everybody because again, I don't have 22 cards here to test them all. So here's something else. Surprising, the RSQ8 and the Urus stop in 31 meters, right? 60 to zero, and then 42 from zero to 70. So it's keeping up with the supercars. Why? Because it's got supercar brakes on it. And it's a supercar SUV or they call them super SUVs. So it's stopping faster than most of your sports cars, right? So I'm not telling you this to make fun of your cars. What I'm trying to do is educate the general public on when you're speeding behind supercars, because I see it all the time. I've experienced it in my car, I've done rallies to where you see these little Mustangs driving by and they're trying to keep up. I'm not making fun of your car because we, most all of us in supercars have been there, right? We've had Mustangs, Camaros, Hellcats. They don't stop the same. And it's not making fun of you in any way. It's just the equipment and the money we're spending is there in our braking and our power and our aero and stuff like that versus you're just buying an engine more, more times out of none, you're buying the engine. 
So keep that in the back of your mind when you're trying to keep up. If you're gonna try to keep up with a car like that because you don't know what's happening in front of him, he sees a tire, blown tire. Guess what, he's gonna stop because he don't wanna tear up $50,000 of a front bumper. He just don't wanna do it, so he's gonna stop. Now if you're over here, you're good. You can still slide by him. If you're right here, you don't know what's happening, you're gonna eat the back of that car. It's not safe for you. So I don't wanna keep down in the cars. I don't want you to think, hey, he's sitting here making fun of all of our cars because that's not the case at all. But what I do want an interesting, interesting fact. So the Ford people get a horrible, horrible reputation for having the Mustangs, the most dangerous car in the world in the car community, right? Let me break that down for you guys. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. The Camaro is the number 13th worst car in the world and in the United States to own. Most dangerous, right? Hellcat is number 12. Now, we got a tie for the fourth most dangerous. There's a tie. And then we got the 10th most dangerous. Now you comment below what you think it is. Some of you are gonna cheat. You suck if you cheat. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and read to y'all number 10. It's actually the Mustang GT is the 10th most dangerous car in the world and in America to drive from years 2015 to 2019 because the 2020 stats just aren't out yet. Which is crazy to me, right? Because number four is the C8 Corvette tied with the C7 Corvette. The mortality rate on those is worse than all three of the other cars combined. So for those of you Corvette guys making fun of all the Mustangs out there, guess what? Your car is more dangerous to drive than theirs. Pretty scary, ain't it? Especially when you waited all that time for that brand new C8 wannabe supercar, right? Right? But the most dangerous car of all is actually a Nissan. All the way up till 20 is mostly Nissans. So for those of y'all, y'all need to stay the hell out of them Nissans. Them bitches are dangerous. That's all I got for today, guys. I kind of want to go through that. Sorry, it's a little bit long. Uh, I'll cut it down some. I probably won't, I'm lying. Uh, but I spent hours and hours looking over this data, found a website that was pretty cool, went through all the data, looked up cars, and I have a ton more, but this is the ones I highlighted for you guys. Just because I want you younger guys to be safe out there. It's not really I'm worried about a supercar. If you run into my supercar, I'm gonna replace it after it's probably totaled because you hit the back of it and the back end costs $150,000. I've seen it, my R8. Uh, so I'm gonna replace it. I'm gonna be more worried about you. Chances are the safety in your car isn't as good as mine either. So I want you people to be safe. Why? Because I wanna see you get into the supercars. I wanna see you get into your next dream car. Take a picture, that's fine. Don't ride in the blind spots and don't hold behind them because it's not safe for you guys. With that being said, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Be safe out there. Peace.